Tell me, has this happened to you before? You go to the mall to shop for something you needed and instead you come out with a big bag full of crap that you didn't just to have those things stay in the bag for several weeks or hidden in the closet unworn for years. Today we're gonna uncover what makes shopping sometimes regretful, whether you are or not a shopaholic and how to get hold of yourself. Yeah, so here's the deal. Maybe I want to buy the new iPhone 12. I can afford it. It's gonna make me look like I'm advancing in society. All of my friends are gonna drool over my new purchase. And that's only until the next new iPhone comes out. And when that day comes, I'm gonna think to myself, crap, I should have waited for the next model. Sounds familiar? Uh, yeah. It's funny how we realize this process only at its last stage, the stage of regret. When you feel guilty or disappointed, instead of feeling happy and proud for the value you get from the purchase, kind of like maybe the discount wasn't that great. But before I give you my solution on preventing that feeling of regret, let's step back and have a look at how this wonderful world of they sell and we buy actually works. A successful business will build their framework around one focus, how to take your money. Whether the product they sell is valuable to general public or not, normally will not matter to them as much as the profit margin that they make. I'm not here to tell you that every product is not worth buying, but remember that businesses spend hundreds of thousands of dollars to lure you into buying their products, regardless of whether you need it or not, and they get really good at pressing your buttons with their marketing. So the businesses know your weak points, that's a fact, and they will always take advantage and a chance to reach into your pocket. You, on the other hand, are gullible and you consider yourself an occasional shopper. How do I know? I've been you. And when you say things like, I've been working hard, I deserve this, or you know what? This one is gonna make me happy. Yeah, it's gonna make me happy. The big guys up there, they're laughing and counting their cash that you willingly gave them. But since you got this far in the video, I would assume you're interested in improving your situation. So how was I able to rig the system? So first step is to recognize you have a problem. And even though it sounds like the first step of rehab, trust me when I say being a shopaholic is a condition. And unless you get it under control, you're gonna continue experiencing that guilt and regret because 15 or 30 minutes after you buy something, that dopamine rush, that yay, I got my fifth pair of blue jeans, that feeling goes away. And what you're stuck with is just looking at that new shirt or shoes or pants, thinking to yourself, crap, I just lost 50 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever. So basically, if you're always broke or you have no more storage space, or if you consider shopping as a form of therapy, congratulations, you're no longer an occasional shopper and now you've been classified as a shopaholic. And step two, observe your spending habits. If you keep noticing that you keep going to the mall without a solid, concrete idea of what you're there to buy, consider that a sign that you're about to hand over your hard-earned cash to yet another business. So what should you do in that case? Leave. Yeah, just turn around and leave. And especially if you're always browsing Amazon, eBay, or any shopping website for that matter without a real life necessity for the items, consider that a red flag. It is so interesting how shopping malls and online stores have been designed to become the go-to place to comfort us when we're bored, sad, tired or even just unable to go to sleep and we the losers we totally fall for it but of course there's some of us who do shop intentionally but we'd still like to reduce some unnecessary spendings or at least to have a system that will allow us to reduce those impulsive shopping situations 
I want to share with you my methods that allow me to keep my money in my pockets and allow me to focus on things that actually matter. For example, when I'm about to buy anything intended or unintended, I first of all ask myself the three questions of Anton's shopping method. Question number one, do I need this? Meaning, is this purchase an absolute necessity or will it for sure bring value to my life? And it's funny enough because about 90% of the times, the purchase does not pass this stage. Question number two, can I afford this? As I only like to pay with cash and normally I leave very little money on my checking account, answering this question beautifully filters unnecessary purchases that I would otherwise make. And question number three, do I already have something like this? When we buy something that makes us really happy, we very often want to recreate that feeling by buying the second version, newer version, and sometimes the third version of that same thing, just to find out that the first high is never the same. So don't waste your money and time, Anton. And only if the purchases pass all three stages of Anton's shopping method, then I go all in. Disclaimer, these are the questions that work very well for me, but it doesn't mean that they're gonna work just as well for you. So feel free to either change the order, add or subtract questions to your liking. And next, as I mentioned before, I completely avoid using credit cards unless I'm buying groceries or gas for cashback or to rack up those sweet, sweet points. And instead I use cash or on very rare occasions, I would use a debit card. Using cash gives me a sense of exchange of my money for a physical item. And that makes me extra considerate about that purchase. On the other hand, when using a credit card, there's no sense of giving away the ownership to the money you're paying with. So that makes it way too easy to swipe away. And it's all fun and games until the bill comes in. When I'm out shopping or shopping online and I find something that I really like and I justify it as something that I really need, I enforce the 24-hour rule, meaning giving my mind 24 hours to sleep on it. And I don't mean to sleep in for a full day, but you get the idea. An impulsive purchase does not feel as impulsive when I digest the idea on spending money on that purchase. And if after 24 hours, I still have the same fiery feeling about that purchase, then I buy it. By the way, when you're passing the checkout lane with a full cart, looking at another accessory for your iPhone or one more magazine with your favorite supermodel on the cover, clearly not realizing that these are the exact purchases you're gonna regret later. What I like to do, as my shirt says, absolutely nothing. I just look straight forward at the person in front of me and get out of the checkout lane fast. There is absolutely nothing that anybody ever needs in this part of the store. This great habit has saved me hundreds if not thousands of dollars by pretty much throwing my money into the toilet. So what I'd like to share with you that I've learned on my journey to financial independence is that being broke is hard and being wealthy is also hard. So do a better job with picking your hard. Slowly educate yourself in personal finance and develop good habits that the future you will thank you for. And I'll try to be on the way to help you with that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.